Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Dota 2 cast by yours truly, b Ballin. And it's, oh, it's so nice to be back and watching some Dota because I have been on vacation for the past week. And I had missed a lot of the international games. I probably even caught, haven't even caught like around one third of the games. So I know it's shocking, but I am here. I'm here to bring you some Dota 2. Um, I tried a couple times. One of them was really bad FPS lag. The other time was just really awful. That was a duel, but it was just really low quality. Uh, really low quality stuff. But here is my third try and hopefully third time's a charm. So let's go. So this is loses bracket round one, as you can plainly read right on your screen between OK Nirmad, China, and Mineski Infinity. Now I haven't seen this game. Um, I've been recommend this game, and it should be very good. So of course we have Mineski representing the Philippines, uh, and OK Nirmad, China representing China. So of all the Chinese teams, OK Nirmad, China is probably um, the, the least least regarded. But don't don't underestimate them. They are very strong. They have incense. They have seeking. They have very strong players who can definitely make their mark and turn a Dota game around and win very, very decidingly. So, Mineski, of course, cannot be underestimated either. They have beaten high-quality Asian teams before. I don't know if they've ever been a Chinese team, but they cannot be underestimated. They've been invited to the international for a reason. And, of course, this video is a VOD on Dota2.com on the video on demand section or you can go to youtube.com slash dota2 to catch all the non-commentaries or all the VODs with commentary so of course this one's without commentary because I'm gonna commentate over it so because this is a VOD I have no direct control over what's happening on the screen I'm gonna be following the auto camera I can't check item or I can't check creep scores or anything like that but the auto camera seems to work working pretty well alright now with all that preamble out of the way let's check take a look at the picks and bands so Mineski decided, or no, yeah, Ch Nirvana China had the first ban, and they banned Night Stalker, who has been pretty common hero in this game, in this, in this tournament. Of course, there are only 46 heroes, so there's four bans for each team rather than the standard five, because there are so few heroes that if we were to ban five heroes, you'd definitely see the same heroes game after game, because the hero pool would have been so limited. But nonetheless, we still have a lot of the competitive heroes. Good work by Icefrog and Valve getting most of the competitive heroes stable. Of course, we're missing heroes like Batrider, Invoker, Shadow Demon, Syllabare that we normally see in the competitive Dota 1 scene. But there are still very strong heroes like Weaver, Clock, etc. Or etc. Et in the competitive hero pool for this tournament. So, okay, Nirvana, China, Ben Night Stalker, a very powerful ganking hero, very tanky, he, and of course, his most powerful hill skill is the Crippling Fear, which can single handedly shut down heroes by itself. It works similar to a Doom, but he can be a little bit more versatile. He doesn't take as much farm, and he can chase very effectively, and Crippling Fear just shuts down so many heroes, it shuts down Weaver, it shuts down powerful spellcasters. He's a very good counter pick for Weaver, so expect to see OK Remind Shadow maybe get a first pick or a second pick Weaver. Um, they also ban the Chen, which indicates they don't want to be pushed on. Um, most teams have been banning pretty, pretty powerful pushing heroes like Enchantress and Chen. I think th every game counts. In this 1.6 million dollar tournament, so if they want to lose. If they're gonna lose, they don't want to lose to push strats. That's my general sense. I haven't watched too many of the games. Maybe you guys can correct me, but excuse me. But that seems the reason why Chen has been banned. Meanwhile, Mineski bans the Spectre and the Lich. Lich is a very powerful soul and a tri-lane hero. His Dark Ritual allows his lane to get so much lane control, get high amounts of experience, and if he's in the tri-lane or if he's facing against a tri lane, um, he can severely limit the experience and subsequently the farm. And Spectre is probably the most powerful late game he can carry in this version, along with Anti Mage. So, they, Mineski wants to make sure the Chinese team doesn't turtle as hard as they usually would, and may pick a Spectre and just sort of basically win if you get a Radiance along with enough tank items. Because Spectre can do that if you if you ban pushing heroes early enough, and if you build your life around Spectre, he can just win the game for you once you drag it off to a certain point. All right, okay, Nirvana China picked up the Beastmaster with their first pick. Now Beastmaster is a very strong hero in many senses. Um, he has a lot of map dominance. 
he can use his hawk. Of course, his roar goes through BKB, so that shuts down heroes like Enigma. Um, of course, it can shut down Weaver because Beastmasters in the Chinese scene tend to pick up very fast gems. So picking the Beastmaster pick opened the way for a Weaver pick by OK Ron China while preventing a Weaver pick by Mineski because Mineski wouldn't want to pick a Weaver with the Beastmaster coming in and roaring with the gem and catching the Weaver out of position. So Mineski respond with Earthshaker Clockwork. Now these are very versatile, very stunny heavy heroes, can gank pretty effectively. Clockwork can have a lot of map dominance and Earthshaker, once he gets a blink tagger, he gets very powerful, he can initiate, he just provides a lot of support and is a very good utility hero. But picking two melee heroes sort of limits this limits what Mineski can pick next. Um, because they saw the Beastmaster first pick, they can probably guess, alright, we'll put the Clockwork against Beastmaster mid, because Beastmaster traditionally goes mid. But when you're picking up two melee so early, that limits what kind of carry you can get. Um, you'll need some range support, you'll need a long lane so which probably is most likely going to be ranged. So, p picking those two melee heroes, um, although they're very strong, I don't really like seeing that with their first two picks, that helps open up a lot of possibilities for OK Nirvana. As you see, they picked up a Weaver and the Ventral Spirit. And Mineski replied with a very safe, very strong hero in the Ancient Apparition. Now, I can tell you this. This comes after the Gamescom tournament, so Ancient Apparition was picked or banned in every game, I think. In 48 games, I remember. You can check it, the statistics out on ghostofgamers.net. But Ancient Apparition was picked or banned in pretty much every single game. So that just indicates what a presence he is in this tournament, how strong, how useful he is. I was I didn't check the winning percentage, but I'm sure it was around 55 to 60 percent. That's just a wild guess on my part. So Ancient Apparition, uh, his Ice Blast shuts down strategy single-handedly. It can shut down a Chen with his global heal in a team fight. It can completely, completely nullify a Necrolite. <laughs> in a team fight because Necrolite of course gains a lot of HP by spamming his death pulse and with Ancient Apparition's secondary effect of the Ice Blast preventing all that health regen it just it's just very annoying to face against it and of course it's global it has a shatter effect so Ice Blast by himself would be a very strong hero but Ancient Apparition can lane very well Cold Feet is an incredibly powerful lane harassment tool and combo with other stuns it can provide another guaranteed chain stun by itself so and of course ice vortex allows Mineski to get even more map vision with the clockwork rockets with ice vortex to give him map vi to give him vision so we saw ok nirvana before the adding apparition pick picking up weaver and ventral spirit weaver probably the strongest carry after the specter in this version and anti-mage so weaver is a very safe pick and ventral spirit will definitely go in the tri lane um, it'll be interesting to see what the landing assignments will be if Weaver will have a soul lane. It all depends on the next picks, but Ventral Spirit will most assuredly go into tri lane and Beastmaster will probably soul mid. So OK Nirvana China banned Pugna and they banned the Anti-Mage. Uh, I don't know if Mineski would have picked up the Anti-Mage regardless. Um, I think Weaver can be Anti-Mage pretty effectively, but Anti-Mage can drain a lot of Weaver's mana and very mobile just like the Weaver. But you know, having two melees, that would be, that indicates to me that Mineski doesn't really want to pick into a melee carry unless it's somebody who severely counteracts Weaver. Um, Anti-Mage can do it okay. Spectre, Spectre, of course, is ridiculous. So Mineski banned the Tidehunter and the Venomancer. They noticed that, okay, Sentinel have a lot of long-range initiation with the Swap, with the Roar, um, with Sh Weaver's Swarm. So they want to limit uh, possible team fight AoE presence by banning the Tidehunter, which I think is a smart ban. Ravage, of course, is basically a guaranteed 3-5 to five man team stun for your entire team, and that just provides so many opportunities to get in. And Venomancer just does a lot of residual damage, and of course his wards are very hard to push against, can push pretty effectively, and can act as map vision or Observer wards for around 60 seconds, which cannot be underestimated when protecting a lane against ganks. So Okiri Nirvana China picked an Enigma to respond to this, and that's a very smart pick, because once Enigma gets a BKB, right now there's nobody on the Scourge that can stop a black hole. 
Beastmaster and Ventral Spare are probably the two most heavily picked heroes to counter the Enigma, along with Pugna for the Nether Ward to zap Enigma before he gets too far in. But right now, if Enigma picks up a BKB, there's not there's no stuns that go through BKB. Clockhook, Earthshaker, Ancient Apparition, all of their spells do not go through BKB. So a very smart pick by OK Your Mind China. It'll be interesting to see what what I'm gonna expect Enigma to be in the jungle, but you can definitely go into the top lane if Sentinel picks up a Windrunner or Potom or some other hero. So we see Minesky responding with the Slarder. Now, normally I'd say this is probably not the best pick because they already have two melee. Their laning presence won't be the strongest. But in this case, it's good because Slardar's amplified damage will help shut down the Weaver. And once Slardar picks up a Blink Dagger, he can Blink in, Crush, throw an amp damage. Weaver can time lapse, but if you have a Sentry Ward or a Dust after the time lapse, you can keep chasing the Weaver and there's nothing much Weaver can do. And Slardar is one of the few heroes that he can keep up with Weaver pretty well because he has Sprint. Um, he has Amplify Damage, he has Stun, and he has a Bash. And Amplify Damage gives him a lot of physical DPS, so don't underestimate the Slaughter. <sighs> Alright, time to take a breath, and let's see what the last picks, is, last picks are. So I'm going to expect to see Ancient Apparition to Slaughter and Earthshaker form a tri-lane. And may have a Puck or a Marana in the long lane. Um, but it wouldn't be surprised me to see dual lanes because dual lanes have been rising into favor in this tournament, probably due to the limited amount of tri lane heroes. Um, but in general, dual lanes have been popular because there's not really too many jungle heroes that are getting banned usually most of the time. Um, but we're definitely going to see a solo Windrunner in this case, and Windrunner can handle her own. So. Enigma will be in the jungle, help support the VS Weaver lane, and Beast Nester will be middle. So this gives... This will be tough for Mineski to handle. They need an anti-pusher, and I don't think Marana is the best anti-pusher. Of course, she she's not as good as anti-pushing as, say, a Puck or a Windrunner, but she definitely can help transition to the late game much more effectively than either of these two heroes. And with Slaughter, Slaughter cannot out-carry Weaver. He can fare pretty well against Weaver, but an overall team fight effectiveness Weaver just hasn't beat. But Marana, you know, Marana with Slaughter can potentially outcarry the, the Weaver, being two very strong semi carries if p provided they get enough farm. But I'm gonna expect OK and Marana China um, to push the Marana lane very hard with Enigma summons because Marana can't do much to stop it. So maybe we're gonna see a bit more of a roaming or shaker, something like that. I don't know. But right now Clockwork Soul Mid, Ancient Apparition, uh, Earth Shaker, and Slaughter helps um, get Slaughter a lot of free farm, get a fast Blink Dagger, and once he gets the Blink Dagger, or once he gets a Vanguard and then a Blink Dagger, then he will just hunt the Weaver, because Blink, Crush, uh, every 8 seconds for 2 seconds, and Amplify Damage just means Weaver will be in a little world of hurt. So, we're going to see Sea King playing that Weaver. We see I uh, a uh, one one one, or maybe that's I I I playing the Venture Spirit. I think that's Incense. Um, of course, I can't control any of the heroes who are watching the VOD. Um, so, it'll be a little bit interesting. I've never really commented like this before, but I've been told that the auto camera in Dota 2 is very fantastic. It won't miss hardly any action, um, but you can't look at the finer nuances of the game, like, you know, creep stats. Um, but it's going to be fun nonetheless, and of course I'll be putting out a video on my thoughts on the Gamescom tournament and the Dota 2 beta in general, and just how m my impressions of it, and look forward to that once I get this video up. It should be pretty good. So, we're going to see Earthshaker placing a ward to guard the rune, may guard the pro priestess, but looks like Earthshaker is going to the bomb lane, and... Priest, or not Priestess, Marana. Marana is going to join him, baby. Uh, Windrunner is blocking the pull spot with a very well placed Observer Ward. So that'll ensure that she gets some experience, that the Scourge can't just pull their own creeps to fight the neutral creeps and, you know, um, control the lane against the Windrunner. But if Earthshaker is helping support Potom in the bottom lane, then. 
that won't really matter because Windrunner can play a bit more aggressively, get more experience than she normally wants. So we're going to see Clockwork vs. Beastmaster. Normally, Beastmaster will control every rune, but Clockwork can handle himself in the rune department pretty well with his rocket. Um, can provide a lot of the same vision that a hawk will. Uh, it won't be able to prevent ganks as well as a hawk because, you know, it has a limited sight radius, but it should be good nonetheless. And now we see.